Hey everyone, Elite here, and today I have an art journaling video to share with you. This was really, really fun to make, and I am skipping a little bit ahead. I'm not sure why I didn't film the sketching part, but um, I just sketched lightly this girl, and I want to give credit now to Tony Burt who is a lovely mixed media artist and she was kind of the inspiration to this uh, girl. And I took one of her classes. I actually haven't finished watching the videos. I should really do that. I love taking online classes. I've talked about this many times in the past. Um, I consider myself an eternal student and it seems like there's always something new and exciting to learn. So um, she has uh, a bunch of classes. They're all really uh, affordable. And uh, what I like about them is that they're kind of like focused. So you create a few projects in each class and I will link you to her website. This is not sponsored. It's not an affiliate link or anything, um, but I, uh, just took one course course of hers and I just really enjoy her style and art. So yeah, this is inspired by her and it was a lot of fun to make. So let's talk just a little bit about products here because I always get questions and I don't want you to wonder. <laughs> so the journal I'm working in is actually an Arteza journal and they have reached out to me and sent me a few of their things and I'm hoping to have some videos for you soon. Um, I have the journal, I have the watercolor pencils and also their brush markers. And I just want to play with everything as much as I can before I, you know, give you my opinion on it. But so far, I'm enjoying the journals and they are lovely, uh, lovely to work in. But yeah, I, I will hopefully have a video soon just dedicated to that. But that's what I'm working in. It's uh, an A5, uh, an A4, sorry, size journal. And yeah, fun to work with. So the pencils are Stedler Mars Lumo pencils, I think they're called. I, I have this one set and I've also used it in my class, which will be released very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. Otherwise you might miss uh, new videos. So the best way is to hit that bell and then you get notified when I post a new video. Um, but these pencils are actually not water soluble and I admit I enjoy working with them because it doesn't get, you know, muddy at all. Now I love working with water soluble pencils. My, um, what's it called? <laughs> Stabilo, Stabilo. I always, the Stedler and Stabilo are, are, um, I confuse them in my mind. So the Stabilo all pencils that are water soluble are like one of my ride or die um, supplies, art supplies. But I also definitely see the advantage of using uh, a pencil that is not water soluble. And, you know, you can do like a lot of shading with it and add more details. And then when you go over it with watercolors, uh, everything stays put. So I think there's a place for both of them in my arsenal. And the paints that I'm using are actually gouache and it's a mixture of the Arteza gouache and uh, some that I have for my stash. I think the ones I use here, I think that's super bright red, which I adore. I'm addicted to that color. I think that's actually a Shinhan Pass um, hybrid paint, they call it. Um, I have quite a few of them. Some colors I love, others not so much, but I think the quality for the price is fantastic. You get a ton of paint and they're really, really affordable. I will put links to anything I can find below. Some are affiliate links, so just be aware, feel free to use them. It doesn't cost you more, it helps me out a bit. I'm very grateful. And if you don't wanna use them, then just Google um, whatever I write in the information box. So yeah, and 
the I think the key here when working on such drawings, paintings, whatever, is to work in layers. Now, I like uh, bright colors. You probably know that. I love bright watercolors and uh, gouache paints as well. Um, but I do think there's a lot to be said for working in kind of more subtle layers and having that contrast between very soft color, those, you know, uh, soft water stains, and then the really intense color. And you can get pretty intense colors also with like one application, but if you layer them, you get even more, even more contrast, even more saturation. So, um, yeah, the, there's definitely something to be said about having some patience and waiting for layers to dry and then coming back, adding more paint and also having uh, fresh eyes and looking at your art journal page and kind of figuring out what it needs. I'm quite impressed with how, <laughs> how crooked her the right side of her face is. It's like really sticking out as... You know, the left side is actually a lot uh, rounder and kind of more elongated. But yeah, what are you going to do? So adding also some splatters because I really like that. And there we go. Just going back and building the color intensity in certain places. Uh, yeah, so I mentioned that a bright red, a very kind of orangey neon red is from... Shinhan Pass, and then some of the pinks are the Arteza, I th the yellow is definitely Arteza, and then I think maybe that red-violet color is probably Windsor Newton, because I have a few of their gouache paints uh, also. And I think with, from what I've seen, um, I think with gouache you kind of, I think the Arteza set is fantastic, but then if you want a few of those uh, special colors or like super, super vibrant colors, the Arteza set definitely has some of those. But if you're very particular and specific about, you know, your pinks or your teals, uh, you might want to add a couple of colors, a couple of more like unique colors to a regular set. And um, yeah. That's what I have there in my palette, which is just a palette I made myself. I used an empty pencil tin. I added some half pans, just what I had lying around. I had a bunch of half pa like half pans and full pans that were empty, so I just stuck a few there and uh, filled them from filled them with my favorite colors from the Arteza set. It has the set that I bought. It has sixty colors, and I don't need all sixty in uh, my palette. Creating your own custom palette is definitely something I recommend at some point in your art journey. At the beginning, it's uh, hard to know which colors you would use regularly, but with time, I think you notice uh, which ones are your go-tos and then which ones are a little bit redundant in your palette. So I always like to create my custom palettes and I change them as my style changes and my color preferences change. So here I'm going in with a bit of white gouache. And that's again something that I picked up from uh, Tony. I always add white accents, but I haven't really incorporated white gouache into my watercolor pieces or gouache pieces in this way. I I've been painting quite a bit with gouache lately, and usually I just mix it with other colors to make them lighter. But this is just like a way to just add kind of another layer. I think it really adds dimension and interest. So here I felt like I just needed, I don't know, a little bit more color there in that area. I'm not sure it was needed. I think maybe here I'm a bit fussing too much. But, you know, this is my art journal. This is where I come to play. I 
can't recommend using an art journal enough. It's just, especially if you are the kind of person that, you know, if you sit down with a piece of paper, you feel kind of that pressure to create something fantastic every time you sit down with a piece of paper. I definitely think an art journal kind of eliminates some of that pressure. And there are a lot of like really great artists out there that work probably like almost all the time just in art journals. And then, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of like Dina Wakely and Jane Davenport. And then if they like a certain piece of art, you can always uh, scan it and kind of digitalize it. Uh, or, you know, you could also tear it out of your art journal and frame it or something. But for me, I really put the emphasis on the process and the way that art journaling and painting and drawing makes me feel than on the final result. And I'm saying that with, you know, I want the final, the end result also to be pretty. I want to have something that I'm like proud to look at. But I also recognize the reality that that just can't happen every time I paint anything. And if I want to grow, if I want to change, if I want to develop my style, it's a learning process and there's always mess ups. So, you know, sometimes you go too far and you're like, ah, ah, yeah, that was a step too far, but you'll never get there if you don't try. So, yeah, now I'm adding a bit uh, back to the <laughs> back to the girl. This is the stage where I'm like, hmm, should I add more or not? And then I just decide to go for it because why not? Um, you know, I like how she looks, but I don't think it would be a huge challenge to draw that again. So I can mess up. Uh, I added a little bit of like a darker, kind of like a purpley blue. You can see underneath my flowers, uh, like as a bit of a shadow. And I, I really like that. I mean, I love using neutrals. I have really fallen in love with neutral colors. And you can see I'm using kind of very muted colors for the hair. But I also love to use um, kind of bright colors or more saturated colors. And I really want to explore using more saturated colors for like shadows because a lot of the times it really depends on the value of the color and not just the color itself. So just a darker color will give me that impression of a shadow, but it can still be a blue. You know what I mean? So I just want to explore that and yeah, you know, just really try to focus on technique and value and detail and less about, you know, product X, product Y. Um, I, I try not to get too caught up in, you know, hunting down that perfect paint, that perfect set, that perfect watercolor. And I'm definitely guilty of that uh, also. But at the end of the day, it's just like knowing how to use what you have and not necessarily just like hunting all the time for something that might make your art look better. And yeah, I don't know if that applies to any of you, but I know sometimes, probably times when I'm feeling less creative and a little bit intimidated or overwhelmed, um, then I go and search for interesting art supplies and new colors and everything. And there's nothing wrong with that. But as long as you're also creating and painting and using what you have and you know what you have and you're familiar with your products, your supplies and what they can do. Um, yeah, so I try to also focus on that and play, play as much as I can. 
I'm hoping to have some new videos for you this month. I know it's been a bit quiet here. I just had a lot of stuff going on, a lot of long weekends, family visits, um, putting final touches to my next course, also learning online. And I'll really do my best to share everything with you and talk about everything. Um, as soon as possible. So keep your eye out for more videos. And going back again to this girl, you can see I just, I, I kept adding stuff. And I think, you know, when you go with like a light hand with um, watercolor or gouache, in this case, I used only gouache, um, you can still get a very delicate look, uh, even if you kind of add more and more as you go. So again, it's about working in layers and kind of seeing what works and then coming back with some fresh eyes and seeing what needs more detail and what you can just leave alone. So this is my final girl. I really loved painting her. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Bye.